Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to the videos. Do the paid requests this time for Bronson? Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, uh, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is Bridge to Terabithia, a 2007 film where I had heard of this movie. I remember vaguely seeing trailers. I never was interested. And sadly, it's because the marketing was very misleading on this in a very bad way. If you look at the trail for this, you would think it'd be, oh, a rip, like a lame version of all those stories like Chronicles of Narnia, that type of stuff, where these kids find this magical group of animals, creatures, and they're going to go on this adventure. Blah, blah. That is not the case at all. Not the case at all. This film has a lot more serious story, a bit more of an emotional story, and it's actually a pretty good movie. I think the marketing and even the, the, the poster is very misleading. Now it stars Josh Hutcherson, which I remember he was in Sethera, the John Favreau movie, which I like that movie. He was recently the star of that Five Minutes at Freddy's movie, which, I mean, that movie's not his fault. It's a bad movie, but he couldn't save it. And he's part of a family that's not doing well financially. He has four sisters, two older ones who are a bit bratty, a younger one who he, he's the closest to, and then the most youngest one like a baby to so his five kids the dad is Robert Patrick always great to see Robert Patrick love him as an actor Copland ICU Terminator 2 of course Zero Tolerance underrated movie from the 90s great on the X-Files big Robert Patrick fan and He's trying to do the best that he can. He's a bit rough around the edges, but he I don't think he means any harm. It's just, you know, the, the tough times his family's going in kind of dissed him from time to time. And Josh is buried at he just bullied at school. Not buried. If he was buried at school, that'd be a different movie. Buried Alive, the kindergarten version. But he just bullied at school. He doesn't really have much for friends. Until this new girl play uh this uh forget the actress's name but leslie is her character name she just her family just moved there and they start bonding there's a race foot race he thinks he's going to win because he's been trained but she wins he's a bit perturbed by that but then they start hanging out they go out into the woods they find this area and pretty much he is warmed up by her, by her, by her, by her, by her, her imagination. And that's really what a good chapter of this movie is. It's about Josh Hutcherson knowing how to draw, Leslie being impressed by that. They go out and they either swing by on this rope and they go out in the woods and they let their imagination let loose. And Josh enjoys this because it gets it away, gets him away from the financial struggle of his family. It's able for him to escape reality for a bit with this girl that he's friend it's told it's friendship. It's not a love story, it's it's a friendship. And a lot of it is about them bonding with each other. And him getting a little bit more along with his little sister, him trying to deal with his dad, some of the struggles where at one point, there's an animal that they caught in the cage, and you know the kid gets it, goes very far away, lets it loose, comes back with the cage now empty, and Robert Patrick says, like, "Where do you go? Where do you take that?" Oh yeah, you let her go. Yeah, well, did you talk to it as well? Huh? Did you tell it not to come back and ruin this place? And when we need the money for the stuff we sell, because they have an area that is like a garden enclosed garden where they raise certain 
food to, to sell for finance financial purposes so he's being hard on his son but at the same time is that too over the top is that a sniveling villain it's a guy that he means well but he doesn't much closeness with his son and i thought robert patrick played that line fairly well where you get the son's we can understand the son's anger towards him but at the same time he's not a one-dimensional villain or anything so i appreciate that and he has more of the bond in these two and yes there are these which i actually think is the weakest part of the movie because it's cgi and it's it's dozable cgi and you know there's this big troll or there's these other creatures and <clears throat> For me, those were the weakest parts of the movie, for me, but I get the reason they're there, so I'm fine with it. As it's just showcase their imagination, their you but at the same time, I will admit those were the least interesting scenes to me. It was more about again the friendship where like she buys him this art set where at home he had a birthday and like his dad got this birthday present of these hot wheel card type of set. And even he realizes it's shitty. And I like that John's like, no, no, it's okay, Dad. We'll, we'll make it work. We'll make you fine. Nah, this thing sucks. I'll, I'll take it back. Not because he's being a dip, but because, ah, this ain't a good... You do tell him, oh, man, this sucky dip for my son. Or they play a prank on this bully, which the bully looked like... I know this is mean, but it looked like a Melissa McCarthy. It looked like Melissa McCarthy if she was like four, 15 years old. Oh, like, it's Melissa McCarthy. They pull a prank on her, but then she starts crying, and you realize that she has issues of her own. And We don't see what Leslie says to her, but you get the idea that she did help. And that comes around later. Josh wants to get a present to thank her for the gift she's given him so he gets her a dog so like i said i thought the two the, the kids worked well in the movie i thought their bonding felt natural uh, the leslie character just how gun ho she is about the imagination and you know there's no limit to it and josh kind of being unsure but kind of ultimately going along with it with his artistic style. And Judge Hutcherson, he doesn't... A lot, the, the story could have played it cheaply, where he'll... There are lesser movies where, oh, he'll act more like a brat, or he'll act more like a dick, or, oh, he's acting really stupid in this scene. I don't think they really did that here. Like, there's a bit where his sister's being picked on, his, his sister's baiting... She took my Tweety, go beat her up. And he goes, yeah, and me get kicked out of school, and oh, that'll, that'll solve everything. Which is true. Or when his dad's bad at him to find the keys, and he doesn't know where they're at, and then realizes that the sister took them. So he gets mad. But it's not over the top where, you little bitch, you know. No, it's just like, oh, great. And now he's going. He's probably going to kill me. Baltley does it. Goes, drops the keys, walks away, and Robert Patrick looks and then looks at him. And that's the thing. I think a lot of times the script did a nice job playing to the characters where they don't. You could easily go too over the top into cartoonish brat or villainy. I think the the director of this helped make Rugrats the cartoon. Which, I haven't seen that in a long, long time. <laughs> Rugrats. I remember not being bad for what it was. So maybe that helped. But I said, if you based it on the trailer, you would think it was just some typical... Dumb family movie about these CGI creatures. Which, they're very much, very, very much in the background of this whole story. Which is good because again that was my least that was the least interesting part to me. It was the idea of what they represent that I was fine with. 
All the, like the designs and the look of them, I'm like, eh. It's 2007. CJ, the CG is what it is, like, you know, with what they had back in the day. You know, they didn't have a humongous budget. It's them playing pretend because, you know, and like her inviting him to her parents' house and how nice the parents treat him. Like I said, it's a very good set of characters that pull you into the story to see what happens next. Now, the dead heavy in the spoilers starting now. <clears throat> About two-thirds of the way into it, you find out that while Josh Hutcherson's character goes on a field trip with this teacher, he comes back and kind of find out that so in heavy spoilers. So if you don't want to know, stop and you know check out the movie. It's I thought it was again pretty good. It's got a good heart to it. <clears throat> you find out that Leslie died. She was swinging. She hit her head. Uh, she died. And it it that's part of the movie is about death, and trying to deal with it. In this world we live in, sad part of growing up. And number one, I'm glad that they kind of did that with like 25 minutes left because some movies would do that and then there's like five minutes left and oh, this is what happened and then we got to rush everything and two, three things happen and then the movie's over. No, they give you enough time where you see the grief the kid has. And you, all all these little things, like the bully says, a, this other bully says this really nasty thing about her, and Josh turns around with his, I like with his fist caught, and the kid's like, I was just kidding. Smacks him right in the face, which was like, yeah. And this is what I'm talking about with the writing being above average of these type of movies. Just like there's a teacher, not the teacher who went on a field trip, another teacher, who seemed like, okay, the grumpy puss. She takes the kid out, and you think, okay, young man. No, instead she's like, I understand how it goes. You know, when my husband died, I didn't want to talk to people, and, you know, I, I was told that I shouldn't cry, but it's okay to cry. So, oh, wow, a teacher who's not a stereotypical, it's, an actual human fucking being and tries to help the kid and says some nice things to him. The dad, Robert Patrick, the first night the kid finds out, Robert Patrick comes in and while the kid's sleeping, he takes his shoes off, puts away his art stuff, tucks him in. The someone else picks on Josh Hutcherson and that female bully that I said kind of looks like Melissa McCarthy. She disapproves this. And the next scene you see is that bully, that other bully with a bloody nose. And Josh is in the school bus seeing this. And then the female bully sits next to him. And Josh is kind of surprised. And says she goes, hey, how's it going? Like, wow, these characters actually have, you know, a couple dimensions to them? Like, okay, this girl that whatever she said to this bully I helped her. And then sees that this kid lost her friend, lost his friend. And I just, without tons of exposition, it was able to give character development. Bravo on that. And then Josh Hutcherson's trying to deal with this. Uh, the Leslie's parents are being nice. Like I say, they don't... Like, a lesser script could have easily been like, uh, all of a sudden, Leslie's parents are acting like a dick to the kid. Our daughter should never have met you. If it wasn't me and you, she would be out there by the tree. No, they don't do that, thankfully. Instead, they're very nice. You know what? You're very nice to our daughter. We thank you for that. Uh, I know she really cared for you. There's a, there's a lot of nice little scenes 
that because you did that with 25 or so minutes left, lets it breathe. You let the movie breathe on this important event. And even these minuscule characters get a moment to shine. And it's like a lot of nice little spices to make the dish of the movie taste that much better. And you know, I like a lot of the scenes I mentioned I liked. I like the scene where okay, the, the girl's parents don't move away, but the Josh goes up and hey, you know, can I use some of the stuff you're leaving behind? Oh sure, that's okay. Oh yeah, we have this dog, but you know, I I I know it's kind of yours, but oh no, you keep it. Oh okay, dear, thank you. So that was a nice scene with the girl's dad and then Josh is like sees someone chase it after him and is pretend and he's running from it and it's Robert Patrick and he hugs him and there's a nice scene between Robert Patrick and Josh is blaming himself and Robert Patrick's like no 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 it's not your fault there's a nice little scene between father and son and again I'm glad to see Robert Patrick because Robert Patrick doesn't get to play a lot of roles like that so it was a nice different change of pace this is not a lot of times he gets to play the loving father and this nice little family moment. It's either, as much as I love it, an action film or a villain. Uh, let's see, Fire in the Sky, he was a different type of character. That was nice to see. And the same with this, a different type of character, a nicer character. And ultimately, he's going to bond with his little sister and then takes her out to this era that Leslie was at. And now instead of Josh and that uh, Leslie character is going to be Josh and his sister and they're going to be bonding and they're going to play pretend and they're going to see all this stuff. That's right, that doesn't answer, you know, the financial problems that the family has, but at the same time, that's reality. Not everything's going to be summed up in a nice tidy bow. That's just how it works in real life. And I looked in the mail. We got a publisher's clearinghouse. It'd be one million dollars. No, no. So I was fine with that. That's more about, okay, the... At least the dad has gotten a bit closer to the, the son in that front. And... While the, that girl might be gone, at least now Josh is closer to his sister... So just a nice ending to a nice heartfelt movie that's about imagination, friendship, loss. And again, the creatures are just a means to an end. They're just a means to the end to showcase the, the play and pretend that the, the help the characters bond. But in the, the marketing made it seem like that's the focal point. And when they're not that honestly interesting to me to look at, they're not really characters per se. Like, there's really, they don't. Maybe there's one that has like one piece of dialogue, maybe. So, that, I mean, they're not really characters, they're just visual. Let's say that characters are just visual, I don't want to say dads, that, dads but not in a funny way. They're just visual motifs. And so yeah, Bridge of Terabithia, despite the piss poor marketing, is actually a lot better movie than you would think. It really is. So, thank you Bronson for that, I appreciate it man. Uh, definitely worth a look. I know I gave it away, but that's why I said spoilers. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye for now.